What's good, Liberators? Fingus here. This is DX2 Demon Review. Today we are talking about the other Hell Leopard. The original Red Panther. The Fallen Floros. One of the 72 demons of the Goetia. He appears as a leopard and can see the past and future. He can control fire and burn all his adversaries to death. Unless he is this version of Floros, who, as you can see, has no fire skills. Just an epic L from Sega. But no, I kid. I kid. Let's, let's get into why the fallen Floros is such a beast. Not bad strength. 192 off rip. I could use a little more. Just, just uh, I, I could use more there, but hey. You can correct that with me, Thomas. Sin infuse him all the way up to 232, which you should probably do because he is in a physical alter world beast. And even though I have yet to get around to running him there, he is def definitely S tier in that regard. I slapped the other 20 into agility as I do with all my physical demons up that accuracy rate. And the last 10 in vitality or luck. Both solid options. Anything but magic. Because if you go there, you, you're you're doing something very, very wrong. And you do, do not belong anywhere near this game. As you can see, with some uber branding, you can get his physical attack above 2,000. And this is him without his second panel with that extra 100 attack. Although I think I have him halfway. Yeah, I did find a dupe of him somewhere along the line. So that's him with a bonus 50 so you're going to need some super branding to get him up above 2,000 physical attack, but it can be done. He resists physical, which is utterly useless. Nulls, fire, equally useless. Weak to ice, beware. Repels, darkness, it is a thing, not a very useful one. Moving on. The skills, the transferable death counter. The following effect will activate when receiving a physical attack. 50% chance to counter dealing physical damage with a power of 150. Not bad, not terribly useful, but hey, it's there. I've never gotten much use out of any of the counterattack skills, but they are a thing that can sometimes add a little spice to the mix. So hey, it's there. Waste of a skill slot, though, if you ask me, because... As I said, he, the place he really shines is Fizz Demapocalypse, assuming you have his second spirit panel, which we'll, we'll get to, which we will get to. For his first unique skill, the Hell Leopard, plus 20% physical hit rate, always a godsend when that accuracy boost is built into the kit. Activates the following chain effect after Iron Fist is activated, inflicts physical pierce effect damage with a power of 40, 30% crit rate on all enemies and then enters into a state of might so he auto charges every time he successfully attack with iron fist his other unique skill inflicts physical pierce effect damage booyah with a power of 120 ooh ooh I'm, uh, like mm. but 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 wait for it 50% crit rate all right I mean, he auto-charges after you use this once, so this helps you get that first crit to start your, to get to get you going, so there's a high chance he's just 100% critting all the time, so that's, that's good. And here's the money, increases his own party's attack and evasion accuracy by 20% if the attack is successful. In Demo Apocalypse, these kind of skills are exceedingly rare. The skill that attacks with the element of choice and also buffs your attack. It is... It, they can't be understated how useful this is. It'll up your score. If you're trying to get into the top 3% of whatever element you're doing, you need those unique demons that can do the simultaneous attack, attack buff, S tier. And remember, well, this only has a meager power of 120. You fire this off. Everyone buffs up. And then the Hell Leopard kicks in, adding another power of 40 attack to every enemy. But in the case of Demapocalypse, 
He's a boss wave guy. So you are smacking that demon for 160 power. Not bad off rip. Not bad in its natural state, but we're going to kick it into overdrive soon. If you level this up, then you probably should. An extra 20% damage to this bad boy and a minus one MP cost to the skill, bringing it down to the low, low cost of 5 MP, which means he could rock out pretty effectively on your physical... Oh, I hate to say speedster because agility of 144 naturally. That is... Oof. That is extremely, extremely painful. But if you don't mind him dragging you a little bit, I mean, you can compensate for that in other ways sin infuse that up to 184 but in a world where the speedsters are all getting that sin infusion as well it's it's tough but i can think of worse demons to use in that particular slot i got him in the psychic archetype for epitome of carnage plus 20 percent to critical hit rate all right and plus 15% to physical damage. Now, when he auto-charges, though that uh, that rebellion, that might only amount only activates on the first attack he'll make with his next Iron Fist. So all the chain effects that are going to be kicking in afterwards are not going to have that auto crit rate. So you are going to have to rely on a critical rate to to get cooking with those. That's why the Hell Leopard has a crit rate built into it, even though it sends you into a state of might. That state of might will activate on your next Iron Fist and all the chain effects from Hell Leopard, as well as his second panel, which we will get to, will kick in. So that's why this is so crucial. And 15% physical damage. Always nice to have that built into the kit because it means we can spend our next two transferables strictly boosting his physical attack capabilities. If you're going to run him in PvP on a speedster physical team, get speedster on him, even though his speed isn't great and the speedster's effectiveness is going to be minimal, you still need it. You still need to get as fast as possible because there are so many speedster teams out there these days and if they get the jump on you you're you, you done it's not even a fight but i would recommend for dem apocalypse of course uh, the obvious ones fizz amp fizz boost fizz enhancement um avoid the master assassin the assassin butcher serial killer because those will only impact basically half of his attacks if you got master assassin it'll only work when Iron Fist is triggered and not on Hell Leopard and the Spirit Panels. If you got Butcher on there, it'll only boost up Hell Leopard and the Spirit Panel boost, not Iron Fist. So you want to stick to Fizz Boost, Fizz Amp, Fizz Enhancement in that regard if you are able. Those are, those are going to be your best in slot for that situation. As for Brands, if you're running in PvP, speed brands, speed brands, you need speed brands, everyone needs speed brands. And war brands would not be amiss because his unique skill will only cost you 5 MP if you got it leveled up. So you can definitely make that work, especially since Undead Alice, while still out there, is far less prevalent. And if you see her on a team and you're running a good speedster physical team, even if she drains your one, you're probably still going to body whoever you're, you're coming up against. She is, she is not the, the threat that she used to be. As for panels, panel 1, plus 15% to physical hit rate. Very nice. Uh, piling on with... Hell Leopard's 20%, so that'll give you a built-in plus 35% to his physical hit rate, which is mwah, beautiful. Can't say no to that, but I would recommend that you jump straight to panel 2 on this guy. Activates the following chain effect after Hell Leopard is activated. Inflicts physical pierce damage. Power of 30 three times 
on random enemies. Counter effects will not work on this skill. Three times on random enemies, unless there's only one enemy, such as in Physical Dome Apocalypse, where it's boom, 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 an extra three attacks, 30 damage, with a total power of 90, adding on to Iron Fist, power of 120, boom. Then follows up with Hell Leopard, power 40. You got 160 there. And then you bring it home with the 90 from panel 2 for the 250 power total blast. Now we're talking. Now you got a demon who not only hits hard, he buffs you as well. Gives your whole team 20% extra physical attack. Can't be S tier. S tier Fizz Apocalypse Demon. That is where he shines. Get him in there if you can, if you're looking for that top 3%. And you you will not you will not go astray. You will not be amiss. He's definitely among the best in the physical dumb apocalypse boss wave. And that's where he gets the big thumbs up from me. That's where I'd recommend you use him. That's where I plan on using him next time Fizz Dem Apocalypse rolls around in that bonus area. I'll probably fuse the rest of him to at least get his panel two and get things going. There. Panel 3 gains physical pierce. Nice. Okay, okay, okay. We'll, we'll keep going. Plus 15% of physical damage. Okay, just 15% though. 15% damage on panel 3? Okay. It's a very underwhelming panel 3, to say the least. I mean, gains physical pierce. His, I mean, his unique ability already comes built with pierce. It's nice that if you run out of MP, he can still punch through and pierce that's that's a nice touch but hardly hardly panel three worthy if you ask me and plus 15 percent damage of course basic it's nice but come on only 15 percent for that you kill him you kill him he say ya. dang and before we hop into his other archetypes let's pop over to fusion if I can find it and not be blind because you can fuse this guy in multi-fusion I don't believe his archetype is all that great so for the common archetype an epitome of fortitude here plus 20% of max HP minus 50% to critical hit rate of damage received um Okay, if you were trying to run him on a slower team, having him be a bulky guy for Kiwamis or boss battles, you, you could make this work, but hardly ideal if you're trying to rock him out in Fizz Dem Apocalypse. But you can always fuse him up, get him, and then when you finally stumble upon a gotcha variant, turn this guy into spirits and get started on that precious panel too. But I wouldn't recommend... Um, paneling this guy or spending a whole lot of resources outside of leveling up him up to 50 or something like that something easy like that and he'll cost you what is that 2.5 million to fuse him normally but there's also this common samuel here and that'll run you probably uh two and a half three mil to fuse him up from from scratch okay so so you're looking at six mil or so to get this guy's common archetype online or if you're fusing him up for panels six mil in that ballpark somewhere so be aware of that and before we wrap this up because it feels like i've been going on for far too long where are you i am always blind looking for this guy there he is. For the Aragami archetype, Hades Blast, physical damage, all enemies, power of 120. If you have his panel 3, I mean, you could consider this, especially if you're trying to take him out in PvP. Hey, cheap Hades Blast, 5 MP, so you can still give him war brands and have him blast turn 1. It's something. Um, but again, you're going to need his panel 3 to get that physical pierce on this particular skill so I'm gonna have to sit that one out for the protector archetype 
Warcry reduces attack and defense of all enemies by 20%. Okay, this is kind of cool because Iron Judgment gives you attack and defense buff. Warcry gives your enemies an attack and a defense debuff. So you could have him go in both ways, so to speak. You have him open with the Warcry, lower their defense, and then, boom, hit with the Iron Fist, boost everyone's attack, and go to town. Or do it in the opposite order. Both sound good. Uh, but again, I don't like... Uh, when he's war crying, he's not punching things. And I would prefer he be punching at all times. And you get that Rakunda on there some other way. Psychic, Epitome of Carnage, which we, which we discussed. Big winner in my book. And the Elementalist. A slightly less than useless Null Ice as it does cover his ice weakness right there. But other than that, eh, you know, maybe a situational slop, uh, switch, uh, swap out where you, you want to use him for a fight, but the enemy's attacking with ice. So you just want to cover up that weakness, even though even though all the boss enemies now pierce with, with, with whatever they attack with. Still, they won't be exposing the weakness, and then you can use them in the fight. Maybe. Maybe you could do something. A <laughs> little something like that. But... I wouldn't. I would not recommend it. And that's all I got today for the man with the sword in his head, but the tiger for a heart. Have a good one, Liberators. Don't get captured.